Everyone, we're here looking at the night sky again as the night rolls on. So it looks like I might be staring towards the north. It could be. I think I see some familiar things there. So one familiar thing we should see in the north is... Well, we might see a uh, Big Dipper. We might see a Little Dipper. We, we might see Cassiopeia. So I can definitely see the Big Dipper here pointing us towards the Little Dipper. Again, if you don't have those, you won't have those grids out there in the night sky, you have to know your constellations. But in between them is Draco, and then over here is Cephas, and up there is Cassiopeia, but it seems like in Cephas and Cassiopeia there's this, this fuzziness. Yeah, I can see sort of, uh, almost looks like a cloud that's huh. uh, going So it must be a cloudy day. Must be a really cloudy day, or it's something else. Well, Maybe it's something else. If I look a little to the left of Cassiopeia, what, what's that? Oh, no, it's another fuzzy thing, and that's certainly not a cloud. Okay, so it's got to be aliens. Or... Oh, wait, it's never aliens. No, not even in the movies. <laughs> okay, if we'd see this thing in the night sky, Cassiopeia pointing right towards this, this fuzzy patch. What would you tell me to do? You'd call me up and say, hey... There's something in the sky. Hey, why don't you go out there and check this thing out? And if you could get your telescope, maybe we could uh, take a closer look. Okay, so you'd first have to tell me where to look. So you'd have to give me some direction. It is about 10.30 at night. Mm hmm How high should I look? Should I look towards Zenith? Should I look towards the horizon? About 30 degrees altitude. All right, so 300 degrees, which is northwest. Okay, so I go outside, and if I looked right now, Using your altitude and azimuth you just gave me, I'd see that fuzzy patch. But remember, if I came out a couple hours later and the sky moved because the Earth is spinning, and I looked in that general direction, a few hours later, that fuzzy patch has definitely moved. It's now near 20 degrees and about 310. So I'd still be kind of in the same ballpark. But what's the better grid system? We want to find something that is specific in the sky, then we want to use the Right ascension declination coordinate system. There we go. So, according to our right ascension declination, it looks like we're around half hour in right ascension and about 20, 30, about 41 degrees of declination. declination. And there is this fuzzy patch out there. This mm -hmm. fuzzy patch is one of those Messier objects we've talked about, whether it's in the constellation section or things we've seen in the planetarium. There are these fuzzy patches in the night sky. And what we could do is we could go to them. And we could magnify them, like you said, with a telescope. <clears throat> this is what it would look like. Which is pretty amazing. Now, in the past, they used to call these nebula. But it turns out that they're just part of the universe, and this is, well, another galaxy. So what do we mean by galaxy? When I look at this shape, we look at M31 here, if I can rotate it here, it's got some distinguishing features. Yeah, this one definitely has some arms that are spiraling out from the center. What well, actually reminds me a little bit of our own galaxy. So that fuzziness we saw in the beginning that was running through the night sky, you could kind of say that we were looking at our own galaxy like this. Yeah, from the inside out. And when we look from the inside out of a flat disk, we see this fuzzy patch running through the sky. Yeah. So we must be living in a galaxy. And the reason we know that these are other galaxies, all the stars that are in this galaxy orbit around that center. They don't orbit around us. Instead of them being island universes now, they became their individual galaxies that are in the overall larger universe. Right. And this one in particular is the Andromeda Galaxy, which is a certain type of galaxy which we're going to look at next. So what we have to first do is really define what a galaxy is. And what we've come to discover is that a galaxy is really a collection of around 100 billion stars, which is a number that is just unfathomable. More stars in the sky than there are grains of sand on the Earth. So that means that each dot you see in the night sky is a star that is in our galaxy, in the Milky Way. And all those fuzzy patches have about 100 billion stars in them. 
and our galaxy is just one of maybe 50 to 100 billion galaxies in the universe. So again, this is a nicer image of what M31 looks like, the Andromeda Galaxy. There is M32 and M33 that kind of sit very, very close to it. There are these satellite galaxies that are around that, which means it's its own tiny little galaxy with billions of stars in them, orbiting the bigger galaxy. With even more billions of stars in them. So when we look at all these fuzzy patches, we found some interesting things, like M31. And we found many, many types of galaxies. Yeah, it turns out most of the places that you look in the heavens that you might think are stars, turns out that if you're looking in deep space, they're galaxies. In those regions, too, that we also looked and saw nothing and opened up our space telescopes to them, this is what we see. And what looks like pure blackness to us is actually filled with light. Anybody who ever gets a chance should take a look at Hubble Deep Field and see what that looks like, because that was once considered a nothing part of the universe, and we now know that there are a lot of galaxies there. So there's three basic shapes and ways that astronomers classify galaxies. They classify them as spirals, like we saw with Andromeda, uh, ellipticals, and irregulars, and we're going to kind of look at each. There are some different types of spiral galaxies, uh, but they all basically have the same thing. They basically have arms that are spiraling out from the center, um, the number of arms or the shape of the actual disk part or the center part of the galaxy will tell you what type it is. It's how we classify them. And those arms are really made of the gas and dust that have pulled together to create new stars. That's where all the new stars are being born. This is a barred spiral galaxy. Spiral galaxies are basically a sort of a circular disk in the center with the arms protruding outward. Barred spiral galaxy is an elongated disk. Uh, that have the arms protruding. The elliptical galaxies are galaxies that people say maybe haven't flattened out yet. Maybe gravity hasn't had enough time to pull these circular egg-shaped galaxies into the flattened disk. May they're working on it, but they just haven't developed that structure that we're used to. Right, and the flatter these things are, or the more circular they are, is the way that they actually, the way they categorize these galaxies. And then the one category that really has no shape whatsoever, it doesn't look like a disk, it doesn't have arms, it's not circular, it's not spherical, it's not egg-shaped, it's something shaped. We call them irregulars. Mm -hmm. I think there'd be more of these than anything, but I don't think they're the number one type of galaxy. Overall, when we're looking at most of the galaxies out there, like we did in the planetarium, the majority of the galaxies we see are what shape? Uh, most of the galaxies are spiral galaxies. And then... A few percent are irregulars, and the rest would be these elliptical shapes. Those are the main three shapes. Why they are the way they are, that is a mystery still that astronomers are trying to answer. But know the three different classifications, know to how to identify the shape, and where they would be in the night sky. So keep on looking up.